Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. I have a, I think it's a fly in here. It's hot, and the fly has appeared. I will find the fly and kill it. I hate flies. Anyway, <clears throat> damn thing. So basically put, uh, um, I have a couple of chatty type things I want to explain to everybody. I'm going to be doing my other videos too, you know, where I run around with my devices and show stuff and eat things. I'm doing those too, don't get me wrong. I'm not switching to this format. I just... I'm going to do these as well also because I have a lot of things to say. And if you don't like to watch them, then that's fine. But if you do like to watch them, then this will give you a good chance. Um, I'm going to try to start clearing up a lot of misconceptions. By the way, I like to make a note when a misconception I'm clearing up is my belief or actual valid fact. Um, I usually try to stick to the whole valid fact. But I, sometimes I say my beliefs and things, but I always try to qualify it and say, I think that this is true, though I am not an expert, blah, 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 blah. Unless I get into computer science, and then I actually act, uh, do know what I'm talking about, like professionally and educationally, backgroundly. <laughs> backgroundly, it's not even a word. Academically would be a better way of putting it. Uh, but anyway, regardless, uh, <laughs> I was making up words there. Um, first and foremost, I keep getting messages from people who watch the videos, right? And then they freak out in some bizarre way, and I don't quite get what it is. Let me explain. You'll get people that come out and say something like, uh, Fukushima is going to cause a million deaths. Cancers are all over the place from it. They'll say, say stuff like this. Now, of course, the problem is, is, is that even to this day, we still haven't been able to calculate how many deaths came from Chernobyl, and you won't be able to. Because the deaths usually, I mean, not, not um, the, the acute deaths, people that actually went there and died like right in the spot. Yes, of course, you can, you can attribute those. And radiation sickness and everything like that, yes. But, but things like cancer, which are a, a, probably one of the leading numbers of deaths from these things. I mean, most of the people that die from the stuff, I, I, I don't actually know this for sure, but I, I would believe this to be true. Uh, and see, there I go, I qualified it. Um, they probably come from cancer. Right, I mean, you you would suspect that because the people get exposure radiation that it, sometimes they develop cancer, and this occurs over a long period of time—10, 20, 30 years sometimes for the cancer to appear. And the problem is you can't pinpoint it on the radiation exposure because cancer appears naturally too. How do you know? You could smoke four packs of cigarettes every single day. Hey, well, my video just paused for some reason. I don't know what that was all about. You could smoke four packs of cigarettes every single day for your entire life, every day, die of lung cancer, but you can't actually say that cigarettes cause lung cancer. Statistically, you can look at thousands of people and realize that people that smoke more get cancer in the lungs more, and you can realize that there's a link, and that's what they did. That's how they proved cancer comes from cigarettes. <laughs> cancer doesn't come from cigarettes, but the cigarettes can cause cancer. Cancer comes from cigarettes. I say the dumbest stuff sometimes, but regardless. But you can't take an individual person, even if it's statistically likely, and say absolutely. Now, you can say pro proportionally, you can say that based on the statistics, oh, yeah, it's much more, it's ridiculously likely that that's what did it. 99.9999. Scientists can even produce things, you know, confidence intervals and all this stuff, but they can't actually 100% say it. Of course, science tries not to 100% say anything. They usually like to give you a qualifier between 0 and 1. Now, that being the case, it's weird. Whenever I say something like, well, hold on a minute, you're saying that maybe 10,000 cases of cancer were reported in this state, and you're saying that they're from Fukushima for sure. Well, how can you prove that? Let's look at the statistics. You can't just say it. Whenever you disagree with them on any little topic, they turn right around and simply, to sim simply say, you are a denier, you are part of the conspiracy, you work for them, those guys, you know who they are. Mm -hmm. And it gets really annoying. It's a very illogical stance. The stance that if I don't fully subscribe to their view, which is apocalyptic, uh, usually, then I am therefore completely in opposition of their view. That's not true. For example, let's take the, uh, the proposition vanilla ice cream tastes really good. I like vanilla ice cream. It takes, tastes very good. Don't you agree vanilla ice cream tastes very good? If I were to say, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe, maybe it's okay. That is not the same as saying, I hate vanilla ice cream. It's terrible. People who eat vanilla ice cream are terrible people. Those are there, There's a position, and there's the lack of agreement with the position. But then there's the counter position over here, and the lack of agreement with the counter position. They're not, in the, they're not one or the other. That's something called a disjunctive syllogism. It's a logical fallacy. If you do not agree, for example, let's say you said that a thousand people die from Fukushima. And I say, well, I'm not sure about that. Maybe I think that 999 of them died. It doesn't mean that I think that zero died. I may think a larger group died. 
The fact that I don't exactly agree with a particular statistic does not make me in the counter position. And to say such things and to infer such things is illogical. I like to stick with logic. That's one of the reasons I don't get along so well with the uh, with the nutcase folks who don't like logic. But anyway, moving on to the second thing. Plutonium, the most deadly substance on Earth. Who originally said that? It's so absolutely not true. Plutonium is very deadly. Now, wait a minute. I can see the flame coming right now. You don't think plutonium is deadly? How all these cases of cancer come from plutonium? It's deadly. If, of course it's deadly. Duh. So is cyanide and arsenic. Plutonium is chemically deadly. Meaning, forget the radiation. The chemical part alone is deadly. Head's a heavy metal. Builds up in, I think, your kidneys off the top of my head. I'd have to double check that to be sure. But it builds up somewhere. I think it's your kidneys. A terrible stuff. And forgetting the chemical part of it for a minute, it's radiologically dangerous. It produces alpha particles. And its decay progeny are also radioactive. Oh, yeah. Plutonium's deadly as hell. It's very deadly. Nasty stuff. But it is not the most, the most deadly subject, uh, subject, uh, substance on Earth. If it were even the second most deadly substance on Earth, it wouldn't be the most. So that is a weird, bizarre belief that I hear from a lot of people say, and it's completely not true. For example, americium-241 in your smoke alarm compared to plutonium-239, which makes things go boom. Americium-241, I believe I did the math on the top of my head. I think it's 50 to 55 times more radioactive per gram. It's talking about specific radioactivity. I'd have to go double check that to be sure. There are truckloads of things. Um, iodine-125 uh, and 131 are both more radioactive than plutonium-239. And plutonium-239, I think that's one of the more radioactive of the plutonium. I have to look at the whole isotopic group to see what all the half-lives are across. But uh, basically put, it is by, by no means the most radioactive. It's an alpha emitter. Um, you get some gamma rays from its progeny and x-rays from it. It is radiologically dangerous. And it has the interesting property that it, you can put in things like a, a, a beryllium and stuff around it and cause it to, you know, neutron flux, which is deadly. I like to point out the uranium-235 would do the same thing. So obviously it's not the most de deadly. It's dangerous. And from a chemical standpoint, I guarantee that cyanide is more deadly. I have to go, I shouldn't say I guarantee that. Because if I say I guarantee it, then somebody's going to be like, well, you have to show proof. And I don't have proof on me right this moment. I have to go look it up. So I hereby unguarantee that. Although I'm not. But regardless, um, you can go look that up somewhere. I'm pretty sure uh, uh, cyanide is more deadly by by mass. Um, I don't know about arsenic, but I would I would I would bet it probably is. But you have to go look it up. In fact, I can actually you can go to um, Lawrence Livermore's uh, website and actually have the the mean uh, 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 LD fifty fifty for for plutonium, for example. So. And again, the counterposition that, that that plutonium is somehow safe is not the same thing as not thinking it's the most. Where do people come up with that stuff? Plutonium is not safe. It's dead dangerous, but it's not the most deadly thing on Earth. Oh, also, newsflash. I have ordered a Ludlum Model 12 with a 44-2 scintillator. That's a one-inch crystal scintillator. Somebody just drove by with a big, loud engine. It's a lot like my old CDV 700. But... Unlike the CDV700, it can take a scintillation counter, and it's really, really, really nice and high quality. Well, the CDV700 is too. Take this piece of Fiesta Wear glass. That's in the times 10 scale if you're curious. Hmm. What's that come out to? About 1,500 counts per minute. But anyhow, so... um. There you go. So that's everything on my list right this moment. I'm hoping next month that I'm going to go on a trip somewhere where I can take more readings, more readings, hoping to take high altitude gamma spectroscopy on an airplane. So this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. And uh, yeah, bye bye. Oh, yeah. Remember, when answering people and talking on the Internet, you, you can say whatever you want, freedom of speech, but here's something that will make people respect you more. Be polite. Be logical. Don't be a troll. You don't have to do these things, but if you do them, people will like you more, and you'll seem less crazy because nothing gets your point across so well as acting crazy, right?